Welcome back to yaymath.org with Yaymath in studio. I'm Robert Adut with my good friend Zach behind camera. And today we're going to be talking about operations with polynomials. This stuff is a little weird if you don't know what's going on, but the second you see it, it's just going to click right into place. And that's my hope for you, that when you see it, it's just going to make sense. So let's just jump right in. The first, I guess, concept that this section tries to teach in the books is this concept of degree. All right, so degree basically is the highest value of the exponent. That's all it is. So if you have something like x to the fourth, that's degree four. In this case, we look through this entire polynomial. We're not multiplying anything. We're only subtracting. So this would be a degree two over here. Uh, sometimes you have situations like this, and then you go on and forth. This would be degree seven, actually, when you multiply these two uh, terms. Um, even though they don't combine, um, the power of the exponents culminate in a power of seven. So this would be degree seven, this would be degree four. Once you understand degree, um, just keep it in the back of your mind for future problems which we're going to do in other videos. Okay, let's learn how to conquer this particular polynomial in which they have us subtract these two. So pretty much when we're adding or subtracting, we're combining like terms. The important thing to keep in mind is it's sort of like we're subtracting this whole thing, which means negative one distributes to all three terms. In other words, all three signs will change inside. It's called distributing the negative. So let's go ahead and do that. This would result in negative x squared plus 2x minus 10. And then over here we realize that the parentheses serve no purpose so we can just take them off. 3x squared plus 2x minus 7. And combinos of like terminologies. Combining like terms. We'll just go through it. 3x squared and minus x squared results in 2x squared. 2x plus 2x is 4x. Negative, sen, <laughs> negative 7 and negative 10, not negative sen. Negative zen, to be like, oh, I hate everything. Not negative zen. Negative 7 and negative 10 would be minus 17. That's pretty much it. Distribute the negative through. Other problems will have a plus here, no problem. You just add all the like terms, okay? Not everyone would be so, not every problem is so friendly. Sometimes they have us multiplying polynomials. We're going to do that now. So, 2x minus y cubed. Oh, the temptation to just bring in the cube to 2x and negative y. Oh, people love it. I'm going to put a big fat non equal to here. People think it's 2x times 2x times 2x, which would be 8x cubed. Negative y times negative y times negative y would be minus y cubed. And it's wah, wah. Doesn't work that way. We have to multiply these binomials together. So to visualize that, we have to write them side by side. I'm going to start with two of them, two out of the three. Here they come. Let's take this, take this off. No wah, wah vibes. No wah wah vibes. No wah wah vibes. 2x minus y, 2x minus y. People call this foil, first, outer, inner, last. Basically, it's distributive property. The 2x will multiply by 1, 2. And then when we're done, the negative y will multiply by 1, 2. Let's go ahead and do that. 2x times 1, 2. 2x times 2x is 4x squared, coming. Then you have 2x times negative y is negative 2xy. Then you have this negative y times these two. That's again negative 2xy. And then you have minus y squared. No, plus y squared. Minus times minus plus. It's an important lesson, right? To not be afraid to make mistakes. That comes with the territory. In fact, there's research that says that making mistakes is the only way that our brains can grow. I believe that's Stanford research. So we can't be afraid to make mistakes because that's the only way our brains will get bigger and bigger. By now, my brain must be enormous because I make mistakes all the time. Let's combine like terms in here. 
4x squared. Negative 2xy, negative 2xy is minus 4xy plus y squared. Okay, this problem is halfway done because we have one more 2x minus y to go. Now we're welcome to write it to the left or the right of this thing, all right? From experience, I've noticed that writing it at the front is a little smoother. I'll explain why, okay? Let's make a little space for ourselves. Let's take this off, okay? Bring this up. Just as a note, I do, I have had students before that uh, like to write really small and they think they're saving paper or something like that. And uh, my, I remember my dad, when I used to do that when I was a kid, he'd be like, use paper! And he would say like, your education is worth it. That's what he would say. So don't be afraid to really stretch out and, and write it large and in charge. Your education is worth it. Um, as long as you're using the paper to help you learn, then that's what it's for, right? We're not um, advocating to waste any paper, but you really want to spread it out on the page so it minimizes mistakes and, and it's not as stressful, okay? So you'll notice I'm trying to write it really big for myself as well. Or just use whiteboards, you know? Okay, here we go. Distributive property, 2x times 1, 2, 3. I'm going to do it. 2x times 4x squared is 8x to the power of 3 cubed. 2x times negative 4xy is negative 8x squared y. That's these two. And then you have 2x times y squared is 2xy squared plus 2xy squared. All right, half done. Now we're going to keep an eye on negative y times those three. All right, here they go. I'm going to do that in blue, actually. Negative y times 4x squared is negative 4x squared y. Some students write it all out in a line. You're welcome to do that. All right, I'm going to show you a cool stacking technique to help you keep track of all of the like terms. So again, this would be negative 4x squared y. That's right here, minus 4x squared y. It's kind of cool. So ready to add down. And then you have negative y times negative 4xy. That will be over here, plus 4xy squared. And then we have negative y times positive y squared. That's negative y cubed. It's out here. All right, and then we're just going to add down, and this problem is complete. Ooh, nice. 8x cubed minus 12x squared y plus 6 x y squared minus y cubed. All right. So basically it was the first two things that we said above, the first and the last, and this middle action. Okay. So don't forget that when you're squaring or multiplying binomials, two terms, you have to write them out and distribute them through. All right. Thank you for watching. This is Robert from yaymath.org and we'll see you again. Bye.